Yeah, lovely hymn to start this ascension tide, which of course brings us really to the end of the 40, mit 40, mitting, 40 days of unremitting joy that my colleagues all talk about. And um, after our reading, after our Acts reading, we'll be putting out the Paschal candle, which of course has been burning ever since Easter morning. It's lovely having you with us. We have lots of us taking part today. I'm going to lead the service and uh, Moira Edwardson, our reader, is going to preach and read the gospel and then Grace, our associate, will, so will celebrate the Eucharist. We start on page one of the Blue Service Book. We meet in Christ's name wherever we are, let us share his peace. We say together the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Remembering how last week we talked about loving one another, we remember, as we always do with this service, that our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first of the commandments is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment, said Jesus, greater than these. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And with those thoughts in mind, we remember that God is love, and each one of us is God's precious child. There's no room for fear in that love. We love because God loved us first. And so let us confess our sins in penitence and in faith. God, our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for this, the Ascension. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, Fill your church on earth with power and compassion, that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so let us pray. Risen and ascended Lord, having lived in a strange world for the past 15 months, starved of human company and touch, separated from our loved ones, we can in some ways relate to how it must have felt for Jesus' disciples who gave up everything to follow him. As we tenderly emerge from hibernation, we pray, loving God, that you will give us the courage and the confidence to reconnect with life as it is now, to be open to new ideas, to new ways of seeing the world. Enable us to author a new chapter, to create new stories and embrace new experiences 
that will enrich our lives and the lives of our families and communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, right now, we're feeling pretty battered and bruised, in need of some loving care and attention, having had our hopes dashed so often. The scars of the last year are now visible. May we be receptive to the ways in which you choose to bind up our wounds and to make something beautiful from the broken parts of our lives, bringing healing and hope through the person who sits with us in the pain or the one who sensitively listens to us with the ear of their heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, many of us have suffered the loss of those dear to us during the pandemic. Some are only able to say farewell, our final goodbyes, through a screen or via a telephone or FaceTime call. Bring comfort to those who are weighed down by grief trying to deal with the roller coaster of emotions that grief and loss bring and help them readjust to the unfamiliar circumstances they find themselves in. Give strength to those who are weary, their energy sapped out as though to make it through each day, those whose hearts are breaking. And we remember particularly at this time people in Israel and Palestine, people in India, people in Northern Ireland, all those places where wounds are being reopened and almost a feeling as if salt is being poured in. And so, God of peace, God help us to love one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we do not know what the future holds, the challenges that lie ahead. But as we embark on this new adventure, may we be assured of knowledge that you have faith in us to live out and share the message, your message of love, even though we fail at times, if that happens, may we get up, dust ourselves down and try again. Help us to trust that we've not been abandoned, but that you, Lord, have promised to be with us every moment of every day. May we step out of the shade of flame and unafraid and move to what shall be to rebuild, to reconcile and recover, claiming the dawn and always choosing the way of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we encounter each day, to the glory of God. Amen. Reading from the book of Acts, the reading for Ascension, is the first chapter, it's the first 11 verses. In the first book, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles that he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs and appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, 
He ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men and my women of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus that has been taken from you into heaven will come the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now I'm going to extinguish our Paschal candle. Now I know, I know the purists among you will say, Oh, Bob, you shouldn't do that till after the gospel. I know, but we hadn't thought of that when we recorded the gospel and the sermon together. So we're going to do it now. This light that shines in our lives reminds us of Christ's love. This gift as he was ascended up into heaven. 